Okay, hello, welcome along. Welcome to the Influence Podcast. Uh, I am particularly excited about this episode uh, and I will share why that is in just a moment. We have a very, very special guest um, who uh, lives, breathes, totally typifies the idea of influence. And so if you've been listening to the show for a while or if you are brand new to this and this is your first episode, what a place to start. So my guest today is Melanie Benson and Melanie is the... Um, Ultimately, she runs Authority Amplifier for Expertpreneurs, uh, which shows you how to stand out in a crowded market. We all need that and attract high paying clients and opportunities. Melanie has a proven track record of accelerating results for her clients. And it's not uncommon to see three to five times revenue increases in the first six months. That is rapid, rapid growth. Uh, she's the host of the top 1.5% podcast, Amplify Your Success. Uh, she's the author of Rewired for Health. She's co-author of the best-selling Voices of the 21st Century, an entrepreneurs.com startup guide to starting an information marketing business. And she's been featured in Bloomberg, uh, sorry, Bloomberg Business Week, Women's Day and Parenting. Melanie is founding executive uh, team member of Women Speakers Association. Whew, what an intro. Melanie, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I, I, I hope that I read that in and, and kind of went through that in the right tone because I'm thinking, wow, that's another thing. And I'm thinking maybe I'll pause here, but there's there's a lot in there, isn't there? I mean, I am genuinely yeah. delighted to have you on the show. So thank you for, thank for joining you. us on Influence today. Thanks for um, having me. It's a it's a it's a it's a pleasure. So I I always and um I think our listeners know, but I always give our guests the opportunity to choose the first question. Um, that I would ask them and then we can literally go anywhere from there. Uh, but you sidestepped that and you handed it back to me and gave me the option um, of, of doing that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, hand over to you and I'm and really just going to say between now and the end of the year, what is the major thing that you're working on or what's the major focus that you're really excited about between now and the end of the year? Well, being as when we're recording this, we just have a few months left. Um, my big thing is, is writing my book. It's one of the, the pieces of influence that I have not yet really focused on and, and made a priority. Although I have a lot of books that I've written and a lot of products I've written. I've co-authored a lot of books. I have digital books, but I don't have that print book that's all mine. And so I'm buckling down and that's, that's the goal for the end of the year is to get it out of my head and into the world. I love it. What's the, well, we'll come back to the book actually. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, sure. take a sidestep to what you just said. What are those pillars of influence then? that you can say mm, for me for you yeah. but then I guess br more broadly as well yeah yeah well I think for me the ones I focus on with my clients uh is um I, I talk about authority positioning a lot and I think a book is a very powerful one uh I believe that podcasts have become a very powerful form of influence and authority positioning uh I think having a signature message that really stands out in the market. And what I, what I mean by a signature message isn't like, um, hey, entrepreneurs need to make money or uh, we need to overcome burnout. Like this, this is a signature message yeah. that has a lot of power and energy in it. So, yeah. uh, and, and we could, you know, be like a workshop leader, an event leader, a uh, webinar leader, you know, some, where, there, where there's like a consistent way we deliver that in a consumable way to our audience. So those are three that I think are, are tried and true and always seem to work well. I love that. I love that. And and so who, again, I'm keeping it quite broad at the start, but who <laughs> needs influence? And in that sense, I mean, who are the people that really need to look at them, need to look at where they are right now, or might be thinking, am I the kind of person that needs to be out there? I need to be impacting more people and influencing more people. Who might that be? Yeah. You know, it's, it's an interesting question, the way you ask it, because the way I experience influence is it is putting you in a place. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an energy that causes people to want to listen to you and will take your advice and put it into action. Like, and, and I don't like the idea of, of leaders and followers per se, when it comes to influence, because I think that creates this weird, you know, separation. But what I know is that as experts, 
when we have influence, it is a differentiator in the marketplace because we know that most of us, the work we do in the world, we have so much competition. There's so many people that use language that makes us feel like we do very similar things. But influence is a way of kind of um, elevating your message so it's easier for your ideal audience or other people with opportunity to recognize you are an authority, you have expertise. And, you know, I always think of, you know, I don't know if I can tell the story right now, but let me, let me know if you need to move on, but there's a story that kind of emerges here. I stumbled into this very accidentally 22 years ago when I started my business, I um, was just invisible. You know, I was just one of, of a few coaches and I, I was so young when I started and I look young too. So, so I used to sit in these rooms going to networking events, cause that's what you're supposed to do yeah. and have these, um, people say, how can you be a coach? Like who would listen to you? You're so, you're so young. How do you have any experience? And I was like, <laughs> I got have training. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, but it was true. Um, I didn't have experience. I had training mm. and I realized very quickly that if I was going to become a sought out business coach, uh, somebody who could help people achieve results, then I had to find a way to differentiate myself from everybody else that was showing up in those rooms, calling themselves a coach. And I, uh, long story short, I found my way into hosting one of the biggest uh, monthly networking events for people who were more visionaries and conscious business owners and things like that in our community here in Los Angeles. And all of a sudden, they went from blending in, being invisible, people doubting me to having influence. Yeah. Because everybody wanted to be in that room, either to connect with other movers and shakers here or there were speakers and other experts who wanted me to book them on that stage. And I realized, oh, wow, I have stumbled into something that's a magic formula here. Because I went from like barely being able to pay my bills and scratch enough money together to get through the month to hand over fist six figure growth, because I learned how to leverage that kind of influence. So that's why I think everybody who is in the business like we are, you have an expertise, you have a service, you have a product, but you have a crowded market. Influence is a brand positioner and a differentiator. Yeah, that's so cool. And the... to be able to stand out and to be able to, as you say, take that income to the next level, but not only that, but then influence and impact people and, and be more sought after yourself and, and run an environment where it's also sought after for people to be in. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, influence is something that you don't have to be born with. You don't have to have it given to you. You can cultivate it. And I think that's a very powerful thing to recognize is that we don't have to wait for somebody to do something for us or to us or with us. We can create it and and be that without, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes being very intentional and strategic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, let me let me just go a little bit further in there. So at the time when you set this up, you were running events was very much the way that you you brought about your own influence. For people that are listening now, and of course, I really want to make this tangible for people that are listening. We, I, mean, I personally talk about Instagram and using that as a platform to share your message, either as an individual or as a, as a, as a business. What do you feel is maybe under, uh, underutilized or maybe overlooked or a really good angle that people could look at as a, as a, as a way to build their influence in, let's say, going into, into 2023? Um, are you okay? So I, what I immediately went to, and you asked that question because I started to think, well, what are the platforms? And I'm a huge fan of podcasts. I think podcasts are growing at the speed light, but I think again, if we think about brand differentiators, what really came to me is authenticity. And I'll tell you why, um, there's an enormous amount of people that are chasing the algorithms these days. And they're like, how do I just do what everybody else is doing? So I get in those algorithm boosts, especially on social media. And a lot of my clients are, that's just not what's capable for them. That's not what's going to be their, their game. And 
I always tell people the more authentic you are, I, I talk about finding your business superpower and then um, really like amplifying that through your messaging, through the platforms you choose, through the clients you, you develop, all of that, or sorry, the clients that you attract and the offerings you develop. And so for me, what that means is that do not try to be the latest and greatest trending TikTok viral video sensation, right? <laughs> like yeah. I was just at an event with transformational leaders over the weekend and somebody started talking about this new TikTok trend and everybody's like, oh, show me, like, I want to be able to replicate that. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, yes, we can, we can learn like what, to how to like tap into algorithms of social media. And I know you're just so good at that. So just follow Jake's advice, do what he says. <laughs> and I think we have to make sure that we're, we're staying connected to that authenticity, because I think the more impact driven you are, the less sustainable it is to just chase an algorithm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of my take on it. And yes, that might mean you're going to do things differently. You might, that might mean you're kind of going against the grain sometimes, but I think that's a very powerful way to stand out in the world is don't just do what everybody else is doing. Do you, but amplify it. I love it. How, well, let me, let me maybe lean on that then. How, if, if people were looking at a particular tool, you mentioned podcasts, so that might be your kind of, uh, if you like, uh, weapon of choice maybe, but what what technology or what platform might people lean on um, if they were looking at amplifying their their authenticity? Yeah, let's talk about podcasts because it's, it's actually one of my absolute favorite platforms because you can be on either side of the mic yeah. and really benefit from it. And um, let me just take a step back and say why I got into podcasting. And, and so I mentioned earlier, I've been in business since 2000 and early on in the day, I was a single woman and I was out to prove myself. So I was willing to be on stages across the world and travel a lot. And, and that was uh, what I was willing to invest to really get on the map and to be able to serve more people and do the work that I do with them. And then all of a sudden I was like, I can't do that anymore. I just don't want to be on the road. I started being more of a home buddy. <laughs> I got a dog. I got married. I was like, I got to find another way to amplify the reach of my work in the world yeah. without feeling like I got to be on an airplane and in a different hotel room. And, you know, a little backstory, like I, I spent like 300 days a year traveling when I was in corporate America. So I was just kind wow. of done with all that. And podcasts started to emerge, you know, first there was teleseminars, which were great, but you know, you actually didn't have the same level of traction that we have with podcasting. Podcasting is growing at the speed of light and it's accessible all over the world in all different ways. Like you don't have to be sitting in front of a computer. Like you do with video, you can literally be, you know, doing anything, working out, taking a bath, <laughs> It's no. like you can walk the dog, you can drive the kids to school and you can listen to a podcast. And I think um, as the podcasting space emerged, I thought, oh, this is it. This is a way of being able to take a message and amplify the reach of that message without having to leave the space that you want to be in. And, and so I am a huge fan of starting your own podcast because of the influence uh, that is available to us when we are a host. It yeah. is a very different level of expertise and authority positioning than being a podcast guest. But if you're not willing to start your own podcast, and I haven't convinced you by the time we're done here today <laughs> about starting your own podcast, then I would highly recommend that you at least be a guest on podcasts. And I coach clients on both sides of the microphone, how to really you know, boost their authority and attract clients using this platform. So you, oh. I don't know if you want me to go deeper into that, but um, I will say one little statistic. Please. Podcasts have um, like basically doubled and tripled in listenership every year for the last six years. Wow. The consumption slowed down a little bit after the pandemic, as you could probably imagine, you know, a bunch of people locked in their homes for two years, yeah. they were hungry for information, but because podcasts are so accessible, they are still listened to at a very high level. And um, when you think about the fact that there's like something like 20 million blog sites across the world, there are 4 million registered podcasts 
on Apple is it's almost 4 million, not quite like 3.8 or something like that. Yeah. But here's where the opportunity is for those of us that are thinking about putting a podcast out as our own authority platform. There are only 380,000 active podcasters right now. There, that means wow. the rest of them went dormant and, and are not actively investing in this medium. That's crazy. So that's, that's pretty much almost exactly what's that 10% of the 3.8 million. So 10% of those are active. Yeah. 90% of those podcasts that are out there right now that are registered aren't even doing anything. They're just sat there collecting dust. Yeah. And typically that's because of a couple of things that I think are important to mention here, because I don't want to scare people and they go, oh, you know, that, that's going to happen to me. I don't want to start my own podcast. What yeah. I'm seeing is there's opportunity. Yeah. There's so much opportunity because we've, yeah. we've, um, we've quote unquote trained listeners to listen to podcasts, but now we're taking the content away that they are hungry for. And part of what's happening is people start a podcast for the wrong reasons. There's a lot of um, people who started a podcast because they're like, oh, I want to share this message, but they didn't really have a strategy and they didn't really have a, a system to monetize it. And so when they realize this is getting a little bit expensive and I'm just not getting anything out of it, they just dump the podcast yeah. and other people haven't integrated it into their authority platforms. So it's not an integrated part of their marketing strategy. And so when it got tedious or they decided they didn't want to do it anymore. They just dropped it. And I really think, I'm sure you've heard that saying, you know, you're 10 feet from gold. Like most of the people are 10 feet from their gold when they cancel or, or quit on their podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I, I my, personally, I think and we, we may have talked about this when I appeared as a guest, uh, I was on, on your show a couple of months ago. Um, but I, uh, we paused the podcast for a while. I think we paused for about three months. And I remember sharing it with a couple of people that I was in a mastermind group with. And they looked at me as if I had two heads. They're like, are you, <laughs> yeah, are you, are you serious? Like, why did you do that? And the re I mean, the reason that I personally stopped, because we'd done about 130 episodes, 120 episodes at the time when we took a break. And the reason that I stopped is because I, I kind of fell out of love with it, uh, having done it for almost two years um and put out an episode every, every week for, for two years or so um but then the reason that we started is because we decided to come with a different angle which was how do i actually uh, you know me sitting in a room on my own talking to myself um and and sharing it with other people who i don't really get to see or meet um didn't really feel that enjoyable but actually interviewing people and talking to people suddenly i was like this is amazing um and we started to integrate it as part of our growth strategy and the business strategy as well which i think you're far better qualified to talk about than, than than i would be but how how would people therefore integrate it as part of their business or how do you kind of teach people to do that so that it, it does have a clear purpose and, and potentially even if not a direct roi but there are clear mm -hmm. ways that it can impact on people's uh, kind of return on their investment yeah great question well, I think um, the first thing is to get to start with the end in mind when you start your podcast. A lot of people just jump on the next trend, but they don't really take the time to sit down and figure out, okay, how, how's this podcast going to fit into things? And so one question you might want to ask yourself is, what do I want out of this podcast? If I could imagine myself five, five years down the road, still publishing this podcast, what is the outcome that is sustaining my motivation in doing this podcast? Yeah. And some people would say, okay, I want to get clients. And uh, some people would say, well, I need it to be a monetizable uh, piece of my business. And some people might say, I want to attract other partners who will promote and, uh, you know, like we can collaborate on things. I do all three, but right. I started my podcast. So this is my second podcast. I started my first podcast in 2008, I think. No, no, no. I'm way back wow. at that. It was like 2010. Before okay. that, I was doing interviews on teleseminars and then turning it into a CD club. I was like the OG, right? Right. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Old wow. school. So I was like, okay, I'm dying with producing CDs because like most yeah. of us don't even have a way to like play those CDs anymore. Yeah. And um, the first podcast I created did not feel like me. I created it based on the advice of my coach at the time, and it was getting great traction, 
but it was not, it just felt off. Like I wasn't inspired. I didn't like the conversations. Um, I, for some reason I was having a hard time attracting guests and I was like, okay, pause that. And I rebirthed my podcast as Amplify Your Success. And I decided to do two things very differently. One, I went with a brand positioning that was so much more me because Amplify has a lot of energy in it, but I think it's a perfect blend of, of feminine and masculine movement. Right. Mm. And I felt like my first podcast was so masculine and I'm like, why okay. do I keep like building masculine brands? Right. Mm. I'm not a masculine person, obviously. So, um, but the second thing I did is I decided not to follow a set of rules that felt confining to me. And all I did was interviews on the first one. And what I yeah. found was my clients would be maybe attracted in by the interviews but they stayed for my solo episodes. Okay. And the solo episodes are the ones that get them to raise their hand and say, how do I work with you? Yeah. And so I decided to not just have an interview or a solo, but to really integrate those two styles and sprinkle in a few on-air coaching segments once in a while. And that was just pure gold for me because I, I could, I came up with the formula where it's usually three interviews and one solo with a little bit of exception where if I might do a series here and there. And it works great for me. And it's so yeah. sustainable. We're, we're on episode 310, I think we're about ready to drop three, no, three, eight. We're about ready to drop three, eight. Yeah. And now I have motivation and inspiration, but I started my podcast. I started to say that. And I got off track. I started my podcast because at the time I didn't want to be out at events anymore, which is where I met a majority of my strategic alliances and collaboration partners. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what if I had a way to do a virtual version of the speaking platform and was inviting other experts and influencers in my space to that give first, have something valuable to give exposure first, which opens up a conversation to, hey, what else you got going on? And that's actually what the currency, I call it collaboration currency, but that currency is what really ignited the podcast for me and, yeah. and really like made it worthwhile. And then the client attraction was like a second kind of icing on the cake, so to speak. So, so I, I mean, so much to take from that. Um, to not, com firstly, finding something that was very much aligned with your values and what was important to you, then kind of breaking the mold or what felt like there was a bit of a mold there. Um, so you could kind of bend the rules and flex the rules a little bit. Um, I hadn't and kind of anticipated and turned this into something that, that might be a bit self-serving, but I'm going to ask, because I, 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 you've kind of got me at that tipping point now where I'm hooked, where I'm wondering, I'd love to, uh, for me to get clear on kind of how we use the podcast at the moment. You know, it, we, it's a mix of uh, interviews and then me sharing various topics and things. Mm -hmm. And you, you'd mentioned actually about Mary sharing some coaching sessions as well. So I'd love to know if, I, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily know because I know you want to listen to all the episodes, but... I wonder if there is obvious kind of low hanging fruit and something that, that we're missing with this podcast mm. that immediately we could, you know, we could implement quite quickly and it, it might make it even more accessible for people and might even either bring a, a bigger audience in or perhaps encourage people where they can say, actually, there's quite a lot of value there. And maybe this is somebody that I want to work with. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've got any I totally have an idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just great. turn this into an on-air coaching session right yeah, now. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say this. <laughs> but I didn't plan on this, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop it. So and let me just proceed this by saying um what I'm about to share, Jake, isn't necessarily the one I would advise you as you're listening in today. I like to find uh I, I'm very much about like customizing everything, but what I know about Jake, Jake teaches people how to um how to, to kind of like get better traction on, on Instagram and really make that as a platform where your influence is built in and you get client traction in the process. So one thing that occurs to me, and we'd probably have to un unpack that a little bit, but really looking at, could you do some kind of Instagram makeover coaching sessions on air? Yeah. You know, people come in with, where's my pain point? And what, what is it that they really want to have happen? And you do some kind of like, hey, well, let's look at your Instagram. And I think there's three reasons why this could be a win, win, win. First of all, the audience is going to get the coaching, right? So they're going to go, oh my God, Jake's brilliant. Hey, how do I join this program? Mm -hmm. The guest uh, not only gets some great advice, and usually this, this is like a, either you 
cut your strategy call cost down to, yeah. to give them a gift for the exposure, or sometimes people just do it for free or they reward their clients. That's another way it works. But the other thing is um, you're going to like give exposure to their Instagram profile. So now yeah. those people are going to go over there and pop in and go, Hey, I'm going to follow them too. And then um, third, obviously for you, you know what the benefit is there. So that, that would be one thing that jumps into my mind immediately. Nice. I am immediately going to look at that after this. <laughs> session. Hmm, okay. I love that. It, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where when you're doing it every, I say every day, but every week, you know, you don't see the wood from the trees, but that, mm -hmm. that, that makes so much sense. So this is, I, I mean, is that, is that angle right now? Is that kind of where your superpower lies? Do you think, is it, is it totally customized to, to individuals as you're working with them? How, how do you really kind of get in there and, give your give your experts or sorry give the benefits to your clients based on mm -hmm. your expertise yeah so my superpower is i see how people can be experienced as an authority or an influencer whatever you want to refer to that as and i also can see where they're blocking that yeah and where maybe they're in their own way, or they haven't really fully stepped into their superpower and brought that brand presence and that, you know, sometimes it's a monetizable offering. And what I love most is having people who know what they do well, but they're, they feel like a best kept secret. Mm. They're like, I, I know I'm good at this, but everyone else is not knowing this. And finding the fastest way for them to turn that around and get on the, the map. And sometimes yeah. we've got to completely overhaul their brand and their offering and their messaging. Messaging is one of my sweet spots. Um, and sometimes it's just a tiny little tweak. It's like, hey, you're, you're leaving, you're kind of dormant in this area. Like, you know, you're not showcasing your coaching or you're not showcasing your programs properly or, uh, your lead magnet makes no sense compared to your offer. Or um, one of my clients for the longest time, like she was on, she was, she had no problem getting booked, but nobody was doing anything. She was getting those dreaded crickets when she would speak at an event or on, on a, a podcast. And so I started diagnosing like, what well, you know, I would, I do this audit and I figure out what's going on. And I, and I was like, you sound like every other social media content creator on the planet why would someone choose you over everyone else? And she would say, well, cause they, they'll resonate with my energy. And I'm like, that's not going to cut it in this market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that might get you a dribble of clients. Yeah. But if you really want to stand out, you need a brand that, that is so catchy and like motivating and, and compelling that people can't wait to go check out what you're doing. And yeah. so we overhauled her brand so that she is a leader in the social marketing space rather than one of the billions of people that have some kind of offering there. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Is there a specific, so as you, as, like, as, as for somebody listening now, is there like a specific kind of step-by-step -step process that you mm -hmm. take them through or, or where could somebody that's listening, where could they learn more about how that might work for them? Yeah. So I use a seven step or seven point system, you might say it's a framework that I, I, I learned accidentally in the beginning in 2000. And then when I kind of pivoted my brand in 2010, I used it again. And yeah. I recently honed my niche in a little bit more and used it again. And so every time I make an adjustment, I work the seven step framework and, uh, and I'm happy to share the framework. I have it as a downloadable guide oh, that yeah. I think makes it super easy. If you go to melaniebenson.com, forward slash influence podcast. So, you know, you're listening to the influence Perfect. podcast, just go to my URL with influence podcast on the end, and you can download the seven step plan. And what I'm looking for when I'm working with clients is are all seven of these pieces of the framework in place. So do you know what your, what I call your unique profit amplifier? This is where you take your superpower and you've got a compelling offer that people can't wait to, to say yes to. Do yeah. you have uh, a way that you're visible in the market, not just once in a while, but all the time? Do you have the messaging so that when somebody sees you or hears you and this you're in front of an ideal client or an ideal alliance partner or whatever, 
they're like, oh my God, she's talking to me right now. Like, this is my problem or this is my goal. And they, they, they're, I call it building a golden uh, thread. Yeah. You know, you, you pique their interest, you intrigue them with stories and talking points and compelling conversation that they're, that they're like, oh my God, like, this is it. <laughs> this is what I've been looking for. And then they're invested in wanting to go further with you, whether that's getting, you know, the resource and you build a connection with them on email or whatever. So there's seven complete steps. And I have a couple of bonus things I teach as well. One of it is the value of authority. So of people are like, well, any authority, I don't know. That feels so like dogmatic, you know, it's like, do I need authority? Like, yes, yes, you do. Because again, in a crowded market, it's like influence, like yep. you're going to blend in if you don't have it. And I think mindset and really owning our message and, and having the confidence, I really want you to hear the part about the confidence, because there's a lot of people walking around out there with so much expertise and there's so many gifts they have to share, but they don't have confidence in their message. So they're holding back. And they're, they're making up this story that they don't have something important for other people to, to learn about. And so they're like, a, a, they're, there's a dormant superpower that's not going anywhere and certainly not making you very much money. That sounds, uh, yeah, it, sound, it sounds great. And it's everything that you described there um, is, fun. I mean, you, you, you know, obviously you've been doing this much longer than I have, but everything that you described as fundamental for somebody to be able to stand out and amplify their influence ultimately be able to reach more people get paid more attract the right people attract the right clients do something that's aligned for them we will we'll put a link in thank you for sharing that as well we'll put a link into the show notes so just it was it was um melaniebenson.com forward slash influence podcast that was right yes um so we'll, we'll put a link in the show notes for people to go across and access that i'm on the page now i'm going to put my details in uh when we've wrapped up because i want to check this out as well um, anybody that's listening, if you're, I mean, I know you're serious about influence. I know you're serious about reaching more people. Um, so do go and check this out from, from Melanie as well. This is a, um, seriously valuable gift. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. You're um, welcome. we'll, we'll circle back to that in just a moment, but I, maybe just a little bit more kind of personal to you, if I may, but I'd love to know what, what kind of the, the, the key, people or key moments in your life that brought you towards um teaching i guess in a way but also living influence and impacting people and and and, and having that message to not just having the message to share because i think a lot of people suggest that they have a message to share but actually then being able to get your head above the crowd and and reach more people what were the major things that you think influenced you to get to that stage um uh, I'll start with a dear friend of mine who we, we ended up uh, being in a mastermind together and there was so many extraordinary moments uh, in the beginning, particularly where he, he helped me move from being feature driven to benefit driven messaging. Yeah. And as a, as a new uh, foundling as a coach in 2000, where I just got all this massively great training on how to coach people. Uh, I realized very quickly, people don't hire coaches. They invest in results, major yep. distinction. Yeah. And he, uh, his name's Adam Rabansky and he and I, um, just, he just taught me so much about messaging and learning how to message became ultimately my, my superpower because it was the thing I struggled with the most until I really integrated it. And now I, I'm so grateful to be able to help hold space for other people with messaging because this is the, it was a game changer. Yeah. And it was a big part of me struggling with, with getting past a thousand dollars a month to six figures over and over and over was <laughs> changing the messaging. And um, he ended up having me speak over and over and over again at his events. Um, we had very complimentary offers. And so it was perfect. And the second thing that taught me was the massive, massive growth potential inside collaboration. I was really fortunate in the beginning to, because I stepped into that space of influence and <clears throat> I became somebody everybody wanted to have some kind of connection with. Yeah. I learned how to turn those connections into collaboration partners. And, um, you know, I had people who probably brought me one to 2 million in revenue because simply 
we invited each other to each other's speaking events. And that became a teaching for me when I, at a certain moment thought, oh, okay, like maybe I'm not going to do this collaboration anymore. It, you know, sometimes those co collaboration partners start to feel a little bit competitive and I got in my head about it and I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't going to work so much and I'll do this on my own. And I'm like, okay, this is really hard. I need the collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And, and I realize it's such an intrinsic part of me being the magic that I am. So definitely messaging and collaboration, I think were the momentum I needed. And then the third was inner circle. You know, entrepreneurship, especially, I don't know, Jake, if you operate mostly out of your home or out of a home office or, you know, are isolated, like I don't have a team of people coming in and out of my office all day. Yeah, yeah. I am working out of my home office and I sometimes don't see anybody besides my husband and my dog for weeks. Yeah. Because I, where I live, I don't live in a Mecca where there's a lot of other of uh, my peers and with, with virtual events or sorry, with live events shut down for so long, I literally was going like years without seeing people. <laughs> and, and that inner circle is something that we can tap into, whether it's a mastermind yeah. or some kind of self-created, uh, you know, community of people, but we need that level of trust. We need that level of camaraderie ship. We need that level of, uh, outside in um, brainstorming and we need people to be there when we're not there for ourselves to really make it. And so that would be my third super pivotal piece of the puzzle is being a mastermind, being a collective of consciousness and people who are like-minded that will elevate you when you're having a hard time elevating yourself. So good. So good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, each of those I'm kind of smiling and nodding along and eagerly uh, agreeing with as well. And I think each of those is, uh, well, as you mentioned, your personal journey to get to this stage has been um, uh, essential, really. But I, I would echo that. I think for anybody listening, uh, each of those things is, is fundamental. I, I, I was drawn, well, I was drawn to all areas, but particularly the, the kind of the, the masterminding and that inner circle group, being that, you know, the people that we surround ourselves with, I think, I think the, the statistic or the, the saying is you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And so always looking to, to kind of surround yourself with people and the, that right mindset, collaborate, uh, whether it's masterminding, whether it is that collaboration that you talked about, um, just feels so, so important to then be able to go and reach more people and serve more people as well. Um, I should probably add one thing to that list. I'm sitting here going like, how did I not include that? But, but the coach, and sometimes the coach is the part, the leader of the mastermind. But if you don't have a coach, I highly recommend getting one. Uh, I find that they serve different purposes. Yeah. And if you're with the right coach, uh, particularly one where you're going to have some one-on-one -on -one, uh, and or small group uh, support, that is one of the ways for you to get out of your own way quickly and get into aligned action. So I just think we also have to keep coaching in the framework because without it, it's very easy to talk yourself out of doing the things that are exactly what you need to do to grow. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, so follow up that question there. I'm glad that you mentioned that uh, with a question that I, I don't know, I don't necessarily know that I don't have the answer to, but it's not really something that I've sat and really thought about in a great deal. I have answered it for other people, but maybe not for myself, which is, how would you advise or how would you recommend or what approach and steps might you take if you were looking to find a new coach or your next coach? Mm -hmm. It's so funny you're asking me that because I am literally getting ready to record an episode of this for my podcast oh, because I find people um, ask me sometimes, you know, it's like, if I'm, if I'm looking for a coach, how do I know you're my coach? Yeah. There's a couple of things. I think coaching is different than mentoring. Let's be really clear. Coaching is pulling the best out of you. Mentoring is teaching what I've learned how to do. Yeah. I do both because I, you know, my clients tend to come to me because they, they want to replicate some of what I do, but they also recognize I'm trained as a results coach. So I have a way of coaching people that's kind of unique. And I think what you need to look at first is, um, does this person get me? 
Secondly, what do I need from a coach to be successful? Do I need to be in a group experience where there's momentum Mm -hmm. or do I need one-on-one immersive, you know, custom based work to really like not hide out in the back of the room and like, you know, kind of barely show up once in a while, because in groups, it's very easy to hide out. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're working one-on-one, it's not so easy to hide out. Mm. And, uh, and third, uh, I think you need a coach that terrifies you slightly (laughs) <laughs> but respects, but is respectful. And I'm saying that because a lot of my clients, they come in and they're like, I'm a little terrified. I'm like, that's a good thing, mm. but I don't want you to be terrified of me. I want you to be knowing that you're no longer going to get to hide out in your limitations and your fears. Yeah. And there are coaches who use bully tactics and stuff like that to get people into momentum. That's not the same thing as coaching. And so I think you need to find a really good coach who has proven track record and results. And then last, you need to be willing to invest in what you can't see to get where you've never been before. Because great coaches rarely can promise you anything, but they can take you where you don't even know you want to go. And and when you get there, you're going to be like, oh my God, that was the most amazing experience I ever had. But yeah. if you say like, where we, what, what are we going to do together? Like they can maybe guess but coaching is not something that's really always about a proven process. I do have processes I use in my work, but I also go off the framework sometimes. Like I have a client I'm working with right now and she's in some patterns. Like she's an eight figure business owner and she's running patterns. And I'm like, hold on. We're going to like park all this other stuff. We got to figure out why you're running this pattern. And that's what good coaches do. They don't let you stay in your shit. Nice. I, th- there was a quote that you just set, shared there, which for me has possibly been the most valuable part of the whole 45 minutes we've been talking, not to disrespect anything else we talked about, because, you know, sure. every, everybody will take this, is the beauty of any type of conversation, or for me personally, it's the beauty of any type of conversation, any type of book, any type of movie, anything like training is that depending on where people are at that very moment, they take that part from it. And then they might come back six months or 12 months or two years later, and then they'll take a totally different part of it, which is relevant for them at that time but you said something which was and i just if you can remember and then um, maybe repeat but it was that you're investing in if you're working with a coach you're investing in something that you can't see but they're going to take you to places that you don't even know you can get to was that the phrasing yeah. that was pretty close yeah <laughs> yeah yeah sorry I'll yeah. Let you, yeah no go. i i mean that is my experience inside of myself that's the experience i create with my clients is you're investing in faith, basically, you're investing yeah. in the energy that you feel with that coach. And sometimes you're investing in their experience. Like a lot of my clients are investing in my experience and knowing that's going to get them. Uh, I have a, a guy I started working with last year or no, sorry, the beginning of, no, it was last year. Wow. We've been together a year now. And he, um, he had faith. He's like, I heard you. He, so this is a great story. He heard me on someone else's podcast. And I was talking about best kept secret syndrome. And he's like, oh man, she just nailed me. Came to my podcast and binged it for three days straight. This is why we need a podcast. Wow. Client warm up, you know, prospect warm up, booked a consult with me and had, you know, invested over $10,000 for a a package within two days of our call because Mm. the, the process worked. But then what he thought he wanted to do isn't where we ended up going. Like I ended up showing him how to double his six figure revenue. And he's like, I didn't even think that was possible. You know, we started getting him visibility that he didn't even know existed. And so he had the faith he had, he invested in, you know, what he believed in my experience, but we went in a direction that he didn't even know he was going to go. And he's so excited. He keeps investing (laughs) in the next package and the next package and the next package because it's working. That's great. I love that story. I love that. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm, I'm conscious of time. I, I'm, this is like the conversation I don't want to stop, but um, I'm very yeah. conscious of time. Maybe we'll have to have a part two someday. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think so. But um, so there's two things I, I'll, I'll ask. Where could you just remind uh, everybody where they can go? I mean, there's, if, if there wasn't before, there will be people flooding there now. But just remind us where we can guide people to to get your, your framework. MelanieBenson.com forward slash forward slash influence 
podcast. Perfect. And we'll, we will link to that in the show notes. Thank you so much for that. Melanie, I have to ask, it's the question I ask everybody. Uh, we probably already touched up on it, but um, I, I must ask this. Um, final question is the, 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 the title of the podcast is Influence. What does the word influence mean to you? Hmm. Influence means that through our message and who we're being, we're inspiring others to take action that they may or may not have ever taken without your influence. Positive action, I should say. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. I'm going to leave that there. I don't think there's anything else I could add to that. Um, Melanie, thank you so much for joining us. I greatly appreciate your time. Uh, I do hope we can do a part two as well. I've loved this conversation. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to leave our listeners with just before we we wrap up today? Uh, I would just say, you know, we oftentimes focus on what we know at the expense of what we can be. And when it comes to amplifying our influence, amplifying the reach of our message, amplifying our income, oftentimes we have to be willing to go into the unknown and like, take a risk to be able to take a bolder action and have a greater impact with our work. And I think I'm pretty sure that most of the people that are listening to this, that's what drives us every day. We want to have a greater impact in the world. And we do that through having more influence. So love to love to support you in that. And I, when you go download that report, I'd love to give me a little shout out and let me know you heard me here on uh, the influence podcast. Yeah, please do. Please do. Ali, thank you so much. Uh, I greatly thank appreciate you. your time. Um, for everybody that's been listening as well I know you'll have enjoyed this episode Um, thank you all so much Uh, look after yourselves, stay safe and we will see you in the very next episode all the best, bye for now